Hello my friends, today we're going to be talking about a time in history in which an Egyptian man traveled to Central Africa. And in this video we will be quoting a book called When We Ruled. And the we in this context of course means Africans, so when Africans ruled. Now, let us begin the quote. Pharaoh Pepe II, the fifth king of the dynasty, became an important ruler inheriting the throne as a young child. He ruled the nation for a lengthy 94 years, the longest of any king in history. In his time, a man called Harkhof made four important voyages into Central Africa from Elephantine. And just to interrupt myself, Elephantine is a uh, island in Upper Egypt, so southern Egypt in other words. Anyway, uh, continuing with the quote, from inscriptions in Harkhof's tomb, we learned that he brought back a number of foreign goods including ebony, incense, ivory, oils, and panther skins. Panther skins? What, they go to Wakanda? Anyway, kidding. Alright, let's get back to the quote. He also returned with a person, a pygmy, very impressed with his voyage. Pepe II, the child king, wrote to Harkhof, saying how keen he was to meet with him. His letter reads as follows. Now, I'm going to do a quote within a quote, because uh, in this part of the book they're quoting another book which translates the pharaoh's actual words. All right. So, this is what Pepe II himself actually said. Come forth to the palace at once. Hurry and bring with you this pygmy whom you brought from the land of the horizon dwellers, who does the dances of the gods. When he goes with you into the ship, place worthy men around him on deck, lest he fall into the water. When he sleeps, surround him with worthy men in his tent. Inspect him ten times a night. My majesty wishes to see this pygmy more than the gifts of mine lands. Orders have been given to the town mayors and overseers of priests that supplies are to be furnished for you from every storage depot in every temple. End of quote. End of that quote. Uh, just going quickly, or briefly I should say, to the other part of the book. Years later, Pepe II became a great conqueror, seizing control of countries to the south, such as Wawet, Irthet, and Punt. And that's where we will end the quote for this book. So that last sentence I mentioned at the very end there, that was a bit of a bonus sentence because it doesn't really have a whole lot of importance to this particular conversation. But yeah, since that was uh, kind of an outlier, let's discuss that first. So uh, Walwet and Irthet, um, those uh, two were located in Danubia and uh, in Punt, um, which is more famous, though many people don't know about it, uh, is thought to either be in Ethiopia or Somalia. Historians aren't totally certain. I'm personally leaning towards it probably being in Somalia. Anyway, let's now go on to our main topic. So first let's uh, analyze the quote of uh, King Pepe II a little bit. Now, I think it's a bit obvious, but just in case it wasn't, uh, that definitely would have been a quote from when he was still a child. And the reason I say that is uh, because just look at how he talks. He's saying that uh, this want of his to see a little man, uh, this pygmy, is more important to him than all the riches of his land. That's definitely a kid talking. So, just thought I'd point that part out real quick. Another thing I want to point out about that quote is he talks about him really wanting to see this pygmy person dance. 
and uh, of course dancing is an important part of every African culture at least every African culture I can think of maybe there's a few outliers but um, yeah of course dancing is a great uh, ancient form of entertainment though I can't help but think that and you probably didn't know this uh, beforehand because this would have been the first pygmy he'd ever met but uh, something that I know about the pygmy that I think is their uh, most interesting art form is their singing not uh, their dancing is just fine but their singing is the most interesting uh, art form that uh, many pygmy groups uh, perform and I should say I should note um, before I move on that um, pygmies aren't just one group of people there are multiple different groups um, now and so I'll get back to what I was saying in a moment but I remember hearing a long time ago that um, pygmies don't actually like being called uh, pygmies I'm not 100% sure on that because it's been so long since I heard that but um, I had to use the word pygmy in this case because um, we do not know which um, particular peoples that uh, Harkov met um, so in this case kind of have to use the word pygmy but um, as far as I know uh, and the territory of these peoples would have likely have changed uh, over time this was thousands of years ago but my best guess would be these would be the Mubuti people these pygmies would be the Mubuti people of Northeast Democratic Republic of Congo but there might and they may have uh, had a larger territory than that and there are pygmies in other uh, parts of Central Africa as well uh, but yeah the Mabuti as far as I'm aware are the closest pygmy group to Egypt and that would be Northeast Congo now Democratic Republic of Congo because there's another Congo so I'm just trying to make that a clarification now what on earth was I saying a second ago <laughs> kind of went on uh, kind of went on quite a, a bit of a rant there oh yeah I just remembered so what I was trying to get at before is in my opinion uh, the most interesting art form uh, that they can that they perform is uh, their singing which of course singing often goes along with dancing but I just want to make a, a note of that because uh, if you ever get a chance to to look it up uh, like pygmy singing or uh, Mubuti singing or uh, another group uh, that I've listened to Baka which but the Baka are more westerly um, but yeah these uh, their their singing ability is very very unique um, and it's called uh, apparently scholars call it polymorphic uh, singing now I'm not a musician I can't explain to you the in and outs of what makes it so uh, special but I do have ears and it's definitely very different I have a feeling it's a bit of a, an acquired taste so I can't guarantee you'll like their singing but I personally like it I think it's very strange and interesting I quite like it anyway so my point is that the singing is what Pepe the second should have been the most excited about in my opinion so anyway as far as uh, this text is concerned it seems to indicate that uh, Egypt its furthest reach uh, furthest reach south into uh, Africa would have been uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo um, now if we're being more conservative it might have been more northerly than that where they uh, picked up this pygmy 
because again people move over time this was thousands of years ago I assume uh, pygmy populations would have had a larger uh, area under their uh, domain back in the day um, and I did see I did actually see one map uh, and most maps again would that I've seen have the closest pygmy population being the Mabuti which again that would be northeast Democratic Republic of Congo but I saw one map that seemed to in be indicating uh, that maybe there was a population in South Sudan either way that is literally touching the Democratic Republic of Congo so it's uh, so it basically if we're being conservative about this idea then maybe they only went re reached as far south as South Sudan um, either way uh, though in my mind I think of South Sudan as an East African country and there this book says literally says Central Africa which is the Democratic Republic of Congo as well as a few other countries though I'm probably being a little semantical about this because what counts as um, what counts as East and what counts as Central is debatable what counts as East and what counts as South is debatable what counts as West and what counts as uh, Central is debatable a good example of this is Cameroon like I've seen people claim that Cameroon is West Africa and some people claim Cameroon is Central Africa you get my point right um, but yeah so point is I wanted to uh, tell you uh, about where uh, Egypt had its furthest contact south now that's doesn't include how far west Egypt uh, contacted but that's conversation for another day anyway uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, keep in mind keep in mind before you go this is not the first time I've done a video in which I've talked about Africa's connections to Egypt and I'll probably have a link to that other video uh, at the end of this video and uh, I may be doing more videos like this and this is if you saw my previous update video this is what I was talking about when I said I wanted to try doing some shorter videos uh, involving quotes about Africa now chances are this video is probably a lot longer than I think it is <laughs> But the important thing is that I probably won't have to edit a shitload of things, and that will make it shorter for me. <laughs> so when I said short videos, I more so meant that I'm hoping to make videos that are easier for me to make. I don't know if the actual video itself will be shorter. Um, but yeah, and the reason for that is I want to try to put out more videos more often now will I actually be able to put out more videos more often I have no clue maybe I will maybe I won't uh, but the the goal and I didn't quite uh, specify this well enough in that update the goal that I would like to do is one video per week uh, and I'm going to try for Thursdays at 2 for the uploads <laughs> watch this be one be uploaded completely late who knows who knows maybe I will actually make that Thursday at 2 deadline um, but that's not to say that I won't ever do videos outside of that time okay I'm just saying that's what I'm aiming for but uh, if you've been with me for a while you kn you should know by now that uh, I tend to average one or two videos a month that might continue to be the case I do not know uh, but we're going to try to make more videos and uh, yeah that's that um, stay tuned for more 
Conversations About Africa.